Ryan Ramchek news takes a bad turn, so we are here locked on Saints with Ross Jackson. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ryan Ramchek injury update not sounding good. This is coming out of the league meetings uh, with head coach Dennis Allen. In this video, Ross is going to show a clip of Dennis explaining where Ryan Ramchek is with his injury update. Spoiler alert, TLDR, it sounds like it's not getting better. It sounds like it's getting worse or, or at least not progressing. And with a degenerative knee issue, that's not good, right? So... I'm going to kind of talk about that news, but really what it means for the Saints moving forward as far as the draft and the kind of roster building. A whole little bit of Dennis Allen's conversation with some of New Orleans media who are over in Orlando for the league meetings, and that'll give you my thoughts on the situation and why we shouldn't necessarily hit the panic button just yet. And of course, we'll also still explore ways that the New Orleans Saints can deal with this. And sure, you can call me whatever you want, ever the optimist and all that, but just give me a moment and I'll explain uh, what I want to explain here. But first, let's hear Dennis Allen's update on Ryan Ramchek and where things stand as of the league meeting. All right, let's do it. You know, it's combine a few weeks. Wow, Dennis with no hat. So this was surprising. Every picture I saw of Dennis from the league meeting, he was wearing a hat. Not surprising. I actually thought he was born with a visor on his head. So good to see he's not wearing the hat. Interesting shirt choice. So this is the kind of shirt I've always said, very dangerous, high-risk shirt. You may be wondering why. Sweat. Okay, these heathered, kind of thin material, light-colored shirts. If you're sweating in the pits, if you're sweating, dripping, you know, all over yourself, it's going to show up. And then, we, ladies and gentlemen, we all know, once you start sweating, there's no going back. Okay, once you notice it, it it's OV. So I would have went with, you know, a white a, a black, a color like that, where it's not going to go through. Who knows? He might be padded up. Respect. Goatee decision to just leave the chin situation. Controversial. Not even that brave, but I can dig it. Weeks ago, I was feeling a lot better about it. Um, oh, he okay. Excuse me. He does have, he, it is the goatee. It was just the lighting. I thought he just left the chin, but he's got the full goatee, so respect and yet i don't know that i'm seeing as much progress as i was hoping to see you know at this point so i think that still kind of remains to be seen but here's the cool thing we got plenty of time you know no different than what we were talking about with with cam and being a veteran player and and uh um, you know probably not utilizing necessarily a lot during during this ota and in uh mini camp you know i would see the same thing you know with ram too so i mean i would assume what he's saying there about not like plenty of time is that he's just going to rest he's just going to chill he's not going to do any of the you know, heavy lifting with otas and mini camp and preseason all that and maybe it will get better there is time for it to get better or at least progress a little bit it's not like we're playing games in two weeks now what i would say to that is i understand you want to be optimistic but with a degenerative knee issue we were talking about retirement a few weeks ago with Ramcheck. And to hear this, it's not exactly, it doesn't instill a lot of confidence. Now, this, this doesn't mean that Ryan Ramchek has to retire. This doesn't mean that his career is over. This doesn't mean any of that. This just means that, look, you know, we were hoping it would progress a little further. It's not, so we need to plan accordingly. I think that this pretty much locks up slash guarantees the Saints are going to go with, with an offensive lineman in the first round. Um, I think we're just going to have to wait and see how that all goes as we go through, you know, all the off season and, and as we get into the training camp aspect. Yeah. So that's the update from Dennis Allen on Ryan Ramchek. In case you did miss it, Ryan Ramchek, of course, dealing with that sort of degenerative knee issue, with the degenerating ligament there. That's going to be just kind of a lifelong battle for him. Uh, if you track the timeline for all of this at the end of the season, he wasn't even able to finish the season because of what was going on. Uh, it sounded like at some times conversations might have kind of lent themselves towards maybe the idea of him hanging it up, right? Like not even being able to get out on the field again. Then all of a sudden it was like, okay, it wasn't a major surgery. It was an off-season sort of minor surgery and that things were sounding good from when we spoke with uh, Dennis Allen over at... I'm not a doctor, okay? But the way I understand these situations are you want just be, just to have it manageable. You want it to be... It's never going to get better per se, but if you can have it manageable and still be able to play, then okay. And that's what the Saints are looking for. The problem is he couldn't finish the season last last year because of how bad it was. It hasn't progressed, and that lends me to think he's not going to be. He, he's he. 
right now, it sounded like Elmer Fudd right there. Right now, if he if the season started, he wouldn't be able to play. So how much longer does he sit in that limbo of, I have a knee issue that's not going to get better, and it currently is at a state to where it's not letting me play. At what point do you hang it up? That is the big question here. And that's where that's why I think the retirement talk even started. We're at the combine now, all of a sudden, a month later, things have kind of changed course. And this is what happens when it comes to medical stuff, right? Like you get information as a head coach that says, hey, thumbs up, things are going in the right direction. It doesn't mean that things are going to stay in the right direction. And unfortunately, that seems to be what's happened here with Ryan Ramchick. The thing that I want to point out, and it kind of gave you a little bit of a sneak peek into what we're talking about, about Cam Jordan a little bit later on in the show, is that, you know, Dennis Allen's right. Like the thing to remember here is that the Saints goal for Ryan Ramchick need not be that he's on the field during rookie mini camps or OTAs in June or anything like that. It's really, you know, are you going to be ready for September, right? We're not. All right. I, I disagree with this because you can't look at it like that. It's not September. It's the draft. You have to know what's going on with Ryan Ramchick or at least have an idea of what's going to be going on with Ryan Ramchick for the draft. You can't say like, well, we'll just, you can't be so focused on, well, we'll just get Ramchick ready for week one. That's what we're focused on. Okay, well, you have to plan for one, him not being there for week one, two, him not being there for the rest of the season, three, him possibly retiring. So if you're looking at that and you know the draft is coming up, the offensive line is already a position of need. Which, guys, let me let me explain this. I've made so many draft videos. I have said probably in every single draft video that offensive line is a need. Offensive line is, now that we have Chase Young, offensive line is probably the number one need. My whole thing with this is that just because it's the number one need doesn't mean you have to address it in the first round. If you can address it, Let's put it in Madden terms. If you're going to draft a first-round offensive lineman, and that first-round offensive lineman is going to be a 78 overall, I believe you can find a 75 overall in maybe the third round or the fourth round or in free agency. That's my whole thing with offensive line. I do think we need to address it. I just think you can address it in different areas. And if you can take someone at 14 who is going to be, let's say, an 81 overall, right? Like a lot to, or let's say, uh, Dallas Turner slides or Brock Bowers or whatever, then you say, okay, well, I'm going to take that player at 14, and then I'm going to draft the 75 overall offensive line lineman later on, or I'm going to sign one in free agency. So don't, don't get it twisted that me saying we shouldn't take a lineman at 14 equals we shouldn't take a lineman. I 100% think that offensive line is a priority position. Now, with Ramchek, with the news here, with us signing Chase Young, with us desperately needing offensive line, I think it's pretty much guaranteed we're going to take one in the first round. And I'm okay with that. I know it sounds like I'm not, but I'm okay with that. I understand the situation on one condition, that we trade down to do it. Because the second thing the Saints need the most right now are picks. We don't have a lot of picks, or we do have a lot of picks, but they're in like the fifth round. We need picks in the third round. We need picks in the fourth round. We need picks in the second round. I'm not totally sure you could get you know all of that to trade down, but let's say you trade from 14 to 21, landscape the situation, trade from 21 to 25, landscape the situation, take your offensive lineman there, or trade again. You know, I know I know we're doing hypotheticals here, but I want to at least know that's that's the mindset. Now maybe they can't find a trade partner. It takes two to tango. Okay, fine. Do what you got to do at 14 then. But this situation lends itself definitely to an offensive lineman. And taking an offensive lineman in turn lends itself to trading down. That's actually kind of a best case scenario is that we are forced to trade down. We do recoup some later draft picks in that second, third, fourth round, somewhere in there. We trade down to take a lineman. We get what we wanted anyways. We fill a position of need, and we get draft picks for to, to maneuver with and take other uh, positions of need. I've, I've seen Ladd McConkey, the Georgia wide receiver, we, weeks ago. I said, I love this guy. I like what I'm seeing. I like what I'm hearing. At that point, he was like a fourth-round grade. Now I'm hearing people say he might get taken late first round, early second. 
But let's say we trade down, take an offensive lineman. We get a second round pick. McConkie's there in the second round. We take McConkie. All of a sudden, I'm, I'm, I'm dancing. I'm thrilled. You know, that's just one example. It could be anybody. Keon Coleman, where is another guy, the wide receiver from Florida State. We targeted way early. One of our first videos was about Keon Coleman. If we trade from 14, Coleman right now is being mocked in like the mid-20s. If we trade from 14 down to 23, get a ton of, or not a ton, but if we get some draft capital and we take Keon Coleman, then we take an offensive lineman in the second round, I'm living, right? I'm feeling good. So we just have to be creative with how we approach this, but there are a lot of possibilities for us to to get this and to get everything we want and more. We just kind of cr- kind of cross our fingers that the, Sa- that the Saints brass, a.k.a. Mickey Loomis, is locked in watching the channel, and, which I mean, come on, I understand I'm on the big screen in the Saints front office, but if he can do that, I'll feel great about this draft. Not looking at Ryan Ramchick's return being for training camp and for the preseason, who cares? Like he's been in the off- offense enough. He knows what it is that the New Orleans Saints want to do. Yes, granted, it is a new offensive system that's coming in. So maybe that's one thing that gives you some pause, but get him in towards the back end of training camp. And then you're in a much different position, much better position. And you're fine in terms of what it is that you want him to do. It's what we talked about over and over again, in terms of, you know, offense in the NFL, everyone does the same stuff. It just depends upon how you scheme it up. So you're not asking him to do something wildly different. You're just asking him to do maybe a little bit more of something, a little bit less of something, or doing that specific thing in different situations than maybe would have been called be- what would have been called before. And that's kind of what you're looking for. You're looking for how is it that you balance what it is that you already do well. I mean, I look, I, I don't think I don't think the Ryan Ramchek thing has any bearing on the idea of like, well, will he be ready to play? I, I don't think they're concerned about him knowing the offense or playing or getting reps in or any of that. They're concerned with him like physically being able to be on the field. It, it doesn't matter about like the the scheme or the strategy or the or the playbook or the new coach or any of that. That that's not that's a non issue right now. The issue is can he put the pads on and play the game? Or will he be on the IR? Or will he be hurt? Or like you know like that's the plan. The plan is or not the plan but the problem. The problem is you got a keystone guy on the offensive line who you don't know you don't know if he'll ever play again. So what do you do in the meantime? You are already weak at the offensive line. You have to address it. If he plays and he's good to go, cool. But how how long will that last? You know, if he, let's say he plays in week one, you you have no, it is truly a day-to-day situation with, with a knee injury like that or, or any kind of degenerative injury. So, you know, even if he plays, to start the season or if he misses the first four or five weeks and ends the season, it's just so much mystery and so much volatility around an injury like that. You have to address it. So I don't think it has anything to do with uh, OTAs or mini camp or training camp or him studying the playbook or Kubiak or any of that. It's, this is, this is strictly a, the best ability is availability issue. And right now, no one knows if he'll be available and they probably won't know on a week to week basis. Well, and how do you utilize that out on the field against your opponent? And how do you call plays at the right time and call the right plays at the right time, which was a big issue, of course, for the Saints over the course of the past couple of seasons. So you're not asking him to relearn how to play football here, right? It's not all of a sudden like you're drafting him to a basketball team and he's having to learn another sport. Like, let's be real, right? Like, this is a different situation there. And yeah, it's much worse. It'd be much easier if you were asking him to learn a whole new system. You're asking him to do something he really has no control over. You're asking his knee, you're asking his ligaments to stop, to stop hurting, to stop being injured. Like that, that is, it's it'd be so much easier. If this was strictly a, you know, get him on the field, get him acclimated, get him ready to roll with the system and all of that with Kubiak. That this is, and that's that's the unfortunate part of this is that the Saints can tell Ryan Ramchek to sit to stay off his feet and rest for three straight months. And you have no idea if after three straight months if it's going to be any better. And so, yes, his experience within the offense is absolutely something that makes sense. His experience as a player in the NFL is something that absolutely puts him in a position to where it's like, hey, if you're not there at OTAs and you're not there at, you know, mini camps and stuff like that, you can still read the playbook like you'll be fine. And so there is sort of this maybe a little bit of a later target in terms of when the actual expectations are for when he can get out on the field. The other thing that you should keep in mind here, too 
is sort of just the optimism around the idea of even this thing being taking a wrong turn, just hearing the team kind of talk about like, hey, this let's not overreact here. Let's wait and see what happens. And here's what Dennis Allen had to say on that front. I think more more of it's just been vision with him and, and, and he just isn't quite where I was probably hoping he'd be. Uh, and, and and really quite frankly where where he was hoping he'd be. So um, but again there's a long time before we kick the ball off. So I wouldn't jump to any any conclusions right now, but but you know we'll we'll, we'll see how it goes over the next you know, three, four, five, six months, whatever that is, before we get to the season. I agree with that. I mean, I, I, and what Dennis is saying is like, look, we're not going to, we have time. We, we don't have to, you know, we don't have to decide his whole life, his whole career right now. We can wait, see how this thing goes. But what I think he's not saying is he is also, and the Saints are probably also going to plan for life without Ryan Ramchek. And it'll be an isolated situation where I, it'll be Ramchek, what's going on with him, and that'll be totally separate of how they plan for the, for the future. They're, they're not going to plan with Ryan Ramchek in it or Ryan Ramchek out of it. They're just going to do what they're going to do. If he plays, cool. If he doesn't, then you know they already they're already planning for life without him anyway. So that's why I think it's just going to be an offensive lineman. I think it's going to be they draft an offensive lineman, and then they're really not. If they don't take a lineman, if we don't address it. The more we don't address it, the more he kind you is de- they're dependent on him to play. But if we fill the position, basically, then you're not dependent on him playing. You're hopeful he plays. Of course, you want him to play. But if he doesn't, it's okay. You have a guy there who you like and you think has a future. So that, that's how I think Dennis will approach this. I I think that's the right way to approach it. You know, same with. I mean, if it was, you know, if it was Alvin Kamara, for example, I would. If I'm Dennis, I'm going into the season thinking someone else is going to be my starting running back and probably drafting a running back or signing someone. And then if Alvin can play cool, if not, okay, we kind of had this contingency plan anyway. So, and that's a much, you know, much more impactful position to try and fill. So that's how I think the Saints are going to look at it moving forward. That's how I would advise you kind of as a Saints fan, look at it moving forward. Fingers crossed. We hope he's on the field, but. I don't think it's make it or break it that he does get to week one. You know, he, it's, it's more of a, it's more like land yap. Like you hope he's there. So we have an extra body. We have an experienced guy. We have a good offensive lineman, but we understand the situation. So there you have it, right? If he's not where he needs to be right now, can he get there later on down the road? There's still some optimism there. So again, call me whatever you want forever. The optimists and all these other things, but let's kind of see how all of this ends up panning out and how all this goes. Now, of course, those are the public facing comments. There are reports out there from Ian Rappaport, things like that, that there is major concern or true concern about where things are headed for Ryan Ramchick and what that could potentially mean. So we can't color it all roses and rainbows, but there is still the situation to where you look at it and go, okay, let's see where things wind up. There is no way you can color this any shade of roses. Like at the, at the absolute best case scenario, He's a he's a volatile role player who possibly could play one week but not play the next week, and and he's an extra body. That that's that's like best case scenario. To to sit here and think there's a possibility that he might just be a hundred percent, and you might just all of a sudden capture lightning in the bottle and his knee problem is a non-issue for a long extended period of time. I, I think that's crazy. So it's not rose shaded at all, but it's not that dire as long as we address it with the draft or free agency, and then it's like, okay, whatever happens, happens. So that it's, it's kind of in the middle where if, if we make the right decisions, this can be almost a non-factor. It's, it's, we can put ourselves in a position where it's only a positive, right, if he does play, whereas it's not really a negative if he doesn't play. So I'm, you know, maybe I'm thinking like two front office here, but... I don't think it's, I'm not even trying to see like the rose shaded part of the story. Because in the meanwhile, you can still be prepared for this. You can draft a right tackle that you trust. You can sign a right tackle that you trust. You can elevate a guy within your own offense that you trust. There's endless opportunity here still for the New Orleans Saints who sit with, I believe, just under $10 million in 
uh, salary with guys like you know Alvin Kamara, Taysom Hill, and others, who's and Jawan Johnson, whose contracts haven't even been touched yet. And it gives you an opportunity to be able to maybe make some more money, go out there and spend some more money, things like that. So look, yeah. we've always known that the New Orleans Saints could not be done at offensive line with what they have right now. And in my opinion, you're still looking to effectively draft the next guy behind Ryan Ramchick. You have to be ready for that. So yeah, even if sure. there is optimism that he's ready to go at the beginning of the season, do you have the optimism that he's going to be ready to go for 17 games? I don't no, obviously not. And and definitely you don't have the opti optimism for, that he's going to go 17 games and then the next 17 games and then the next, like, you know, the writing's on the wall. So address it, move on. And to me, this is like one plus one equals two. This is like the easiest possible issue to have at, at, for the Saints front office. I don't think that you can. And I don't think that you can have enough confidence right now to just close the book and say, I'm sure he'll be fine. No, and I'm sure he'll not. be fine in 2025 at that. Draft yourself a right tackle that yeah. you can see being the future at the position or go out there and sign somebody that you're okay turning to or make sure Landon Young's the right guy for you if that's the route that the Saints decide to go. I want to take a look at that next. What are some of the ways that the Saints can safeguard against this? Regardless of all the optimism, still got to be prepared, right? Still smart football, good team building. You want to be prepared for the worst in this situation. So how do they go about doing it? And for me, it starts with one name and one name only that could be a potential first round selection for the New Orleans Saints. At least that's where it all starts. We got all that coming up for you as we continue on with a cliffhanger, if you will. Or we're going to skip ahead to that part of the video. I think it's pragmatic. I think that it's the right decision to just be ready. Just in Yeah, I mean, again, like, <laughs> yes, obviously like, it, it, they have to. There, there is no, there is no other option. And it's not like, I think a bad way to look at it is, okay, Ryan Ramchek might be gone, so we have to draft the next Ryan Ramchek. You don't have to do that. You can go get an offensive lineman in free agency and say, look, I mean, in worst case scenario, we can plug in this guy. He's a veteran. We have him on the minimum. He's an average player. We can plug him in, just kind of safeguard things. And then we can look to drafting the next Ryan Ramchek later on down the road Unless you unless you feel like that player is at a pick that you can take in the draft now, but you know it's not like a one for one. It's not we're losing. Same with Breeze, where when you lose Drew, like when Drew Breeze retires, the conversation is we got to find the next Drew Breeze. It's not like that. Very rarely are you know all Pro Bowl player out, Pro Pro future Pro Bowler in. That's not really how it works. You have to either you know if the next Drew Breeze. If that's not possible, you have to find somebody who can at least kind of be a bridge or at least just kind of fill the gap. You know, Ian Book was not that. Jameis Winston was not that. Trevor Simeon was not that. Derek Carr is closer to that. Whereas Derek Carr, the next Drew Brees, have the Saints found the next Drew Brees? No. But he is a capable guy who can be in there, kind of navigate the ship while the, we try and find the next Drew Brees. Same with Ryan Ramchek, where it's not a, you got to find the next, like, all pro bowl level right tackle just find someone to fill that gap if needed and when you when you look at it through that lens it opens you up to a lot of other different avenues if you're sitting there and you're only thinking okay we got to find the next 21 year old future pro bowl right tackle all of a sudden you're pigeonholing your draft where you're looking for right tackle you're looking for stepping in play right now you're like everything's pigeonholed the draft's hard enough as it is the more you shrink down what you're looking for and the more you shrink down your possibilities, I think the worst it is. You know, so that, and that's why I think you look at the board and you watch the board move and you, if you decide to, to trade down or not, but you know, just like, I'm just going to make something up, but let's say Malik Neighbors drops to 14 and you're thinking, well, we do need to fill the Ryan Ramchek position. I would say, okay, well, we have, we have this opportunity now. We need to take Neighbors and then we'll figure out you know, maybe it's a free agent or maybe it's a third round pick or a fourth round pick. We plug him in, whatever. Like you figure that out later. But if you're only going into it thinking we have to take the future Ryan Ramchuk, you can miss out on someone like Malik Neighbors or, you know, whoever, if someone falls or, or whatnot. So I, the siren's unbelievable. The Gotham City popping off already. If you hear a siren, sorry about that. But so I, I don't, on one hand, I'm saying, yes, fill the offensive line position situation but don't be so locked in on it no pun intended that you're blind to other like other impact players or other opportunities 
just in case. And we know that offensive line is still a place that the New Orleans Saints should absolutely be looking to address as yeah. early as the first round in this year's yeah. NFL draft. Now, do they have to? No, this is a really, really good tackle class. They could wait until the second round. They can trade up into the third or fourth round and find themselves guys that can hold up at right tackle. And look, I don't think that drafting a right tackle in the first round is a bad idea. I get it. Uh, what do you call it? Positional value, all that other stuff. Like, I understand all that. But you face a lot of elite edge rushers playing yes. over on the right yes, side. Ross. Like, that was J.J. Yes. Mack. J.J. Mack? J.J. Watt's side. That was... Somebody tell me who J.J. Mack is and why I said that. J.J. Uh, Watt's side. That was Khalil Mack's side. That's the side that Cam Jordan has always rushed from and all that. Like, you still need your very good offensive tackles over on the right side. And it just so happens that the Saints have had a run, a fantastic one over the course of their last, you know, most recent history and all that. And so I think you need to be prepared for that. So for me, a guy like Talese Fuaga in the first round at Oregon State, I wouldn't be mad at it. And he gives you some versatility too. He can move around, he can play on both sides and all that. I've seen some people suggest maybe moving Trevor Penning over to right tackle. Probably oh not the wisest Christ. choice. Like I think that- Yeah, he's already- <laughs> You're already having trouble developing him. You're already having trouble getting him to be consistent. And now you're saying, hey, man, how about this? How about you try a whole new position? When it comes to Trevor Penning, if you're going to give him an idea, er, er, not an idea, but an opportunity to get yeah, back keep up him there in and kind of crack the, the starting lineup for you and all that, do it where he's strongest. Do it where yeah. he has experience and where he's played before. I mean, the guy has taken yeah, a side whopping total of 10 career snaps at right tackle during his collegiate years over at UNI, and that was in 2019 and the most that he's ever taken in a single game at right tackle was just four so probably not necessarily the route that you want to go but if you can find yourself a guy that you do trust that could be worth a first round pick or a second round pick or a third you know a, a packaging two fifth round picks to move up or a heck you just want to draft him in the fifth round that's totally fine uh, but when i look at a guy like this six foot five 324 pounds he's right in the same in the sort of the saints prototype and metric and all that Five uh, one three forty yard dash, not blazing, but still very respectable. Are uh, you talking about a nine? Yeah, I mean you you always want a good forty on your right tackle. I mean they're they're you know I mean you got to think how many times right tackles are sprinting in a straight line for forty yards it happens all the time. So it's definitely you know you definitely want you you definitely want to know the the forties on the tackles. But uh, what whatever tackle it is, like we've done this before, and I, and I go ahead and do your homework. Go go look in any draft. Go look at any draft and look at like the first 10 offensive linemen taken. And you're looking at these names like, who the hell are these guys? They're very interchangeable. And I look at it the same way with this one. Like the difference between Fuaga and Guyton, no idea. You know, absolutely no clue. So, you know, I, that, that's why I'm not pressed to take one, like to take one, to be focused on one offensive lineman. I would, I would be much more... I, what I hope, my one hope for the Saints is that they don't just go into it saying, we know what we're doing, we're taking alignment at 14, that's just it. We're taking blank player at 14. And they don't open themselves to the possibility of a trade or open themselves up to a possibility of somebody else. I hope that's not the case. It's the only thing that I think would really be bad is if they go in and they say, we are taking Fuaga at 14, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They turn their cell phones off, they play a little Fortnite, and then boom, they take Fuaga at 14. That, I want them to be on the phone constantly trying to move and trade and shake and do all this stuff and try and you know be creative and look look deeper into the draft. That's what I'm hoping for the Saints. But ladies and gentlemen, let me know in the comments below what you think about this. Are you concerned that the Saints may botch this first round pick? Are you hoping to get a offensive lineman at 14? Are you hoping to trade down? Are you hoping to look somewhere else? What is your philosophy on this? Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.